My reign as a Jeopardy champion lasted almost 35 minutes. This was coming, like the waiting room of the of the vasectomist, and I know that's not what he's called, I know there's like a fancy word, but... If you leave, I have nothing left to live for. My stepmother called a few years ago and said, have you seen your dad? He had come over that morning and just kind of plopped down on the kitchen table and opened up a photo album. And I said, yay. <laughs> and he starts pointing to people that I either don't recognize or who have been dead for so long I can't conjure emotion about it. But dad is visibly emotional and he's pointing to these people and he says, Stephen, that's my grandfather. He taught me how to fish. He was, I had the best jokes. He taught me so many things. He made me feel so loved. And this was my grandma, his wife. And this is his daughter, my aunt. And then he turns the page in the album and he points to his mother, who in the picture is holding me in a diaper. And I was in the diaper. She was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and, and then he turns and there's a picture of his father and he taps on that when he says Stephen remember your your grandfather was on the team at Bell Labs that invented the push button phone I, I know dad you told me that then he finds a picture of himself in a uniform fresh out of the academy state patrol and then a picture of him and my mom standing together my, my, my mom beaming with pride and I looked at my watch and I'm like dad I got shit to do so he flips back to the beginning of the photo album he's got to start over he's missed something he wants me to understand that his grandmother died rather suddenly in the early 70s and it devastated the family. And then just a couple years after that, her daughter, dad's aunt, died. And so his jovial, wise-cracking grandfather had lost his wife and his daughter and then his will to live and his mind in just a handful of years. And so he crawled into the bathtub and blew his own head off with a shotgun, leaving himself for the family to find. And he took a breath and turned the page back to the picture of his mom holding me and he caressed the picture a little bit and told me that she died about a year after the picture was taken of emphysema. And then he took another breath and said, and just four short years later, dad died. And I had already done the math in my head, but the calculations kind of fell on me hard in that moment. Wait a minute, my mother is only 16 years older than I am. I was born into that, good God. My parents were grieving children when they started accidentally having children. And then he pointed to the picture of him in the uniform and explained what it's like for a rookie cop to work, work swing shifts where you do your duty with no sleep and you're interacting with a public that's never happy to see you. You do your duty and it drives a wedge in between you and your wife, my young mother, the anxiety and the exhaustion and the depression and the alcohol finally took their toll and mom and dad called it quits on their marriage. And I noticed family was presented differently at the back of the photo album than in the beginning. And I'm looking at my dad and he's crying now, turning the pages. And I am featured here and there in some of the pictures. The album's not about me, I'm just in it here and there and that's when I realized his name's not dad. Dad is what me and my brother call him. Two human beings on earth, and that's a sacred privilege, but it's two human beings on earth. His name is Jim. And Jim is a wealth of context and meaning that goes far beyond whether or not me and my therapist agree if he did a good job or not. <laughs> Jim. James. He was a son and a grandson and a brother and a father and a husband and an ex-husband and half of a custody agreement. And he got his ass handed to him over and over and over again and all things considered did a pretty good job. And there was far more to him than the man I accused of being the reason I had adult approval issues. There was far more to Jim than my trifling review labeled Steve's dad. And I'm sitting at the kitchen table being reintroduced to my own father. He's not an extra in the movie about me, a red shirt ensign to my Captain Kirk. <laughs> if anything, I'm an extra in the movie about him. I'm some of his favorite pictures in a really thick album. We stood up and we hugged and he walked out and my stepmom called. Have you seen your dad? Yeah, just now.
One more time for Steve, everybody.